This is Cashflow Ninja, episode 71, with Jimmy Freeland and Bob Scott. Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Now, here is your host, MC Laubscher. Hello everyone, MC Lobster here and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I've got a fantastic show for you and in today's show, we're going to talk about how to create income streams from real estate investments with lease options. We're also going to be looking at how you can pair lease options with the infinite banking concept that I have discussed on the show many times. I think you're going to find the conversation with my two guests today fascinating. They have a very interesting business model and they're doing fascinating stuff with their company, Joint Ops Properties. My guest today is Jimmy Freeland and Bob Scott. Now, Join Ops Properties was the brainchild of Jimmy and Bob, and both of them are two United States military officers and academy graduates. Jimmy is a graduate from the United States Military Academy in 2003, and Bob Scott is a graduate of the United States Air Force Academy in 2006. They both teamed up together to create joint ops properties and capitalize on unique opportunities in the U.S. real estate market. With decades of experience behind them and an emphasis on the St. Louis area, joint ops properties has been able to secure over 100 distressed properties, often at just 30 to 40 cents on the dollar, resulting in day one equity for their investors. Join Ops currently focuses on single-family homes and tenants seeking a lease-to-own option, resulting in tenant buyers with more skin in the game, as opposed to a traditional tenant with no long-term interest in the home. This tried-and-tested formula has resulted in a 0% default rate and a steady stream of passive income for those looking for a safe and higher return on their long-term capital. As Joint Ops Properties continues to expand, additional opportunities for investors are being purchased every month while families move into homes they can afford and reside in for decades to come. They've definitely created a business model where there's a win-win relationship for everybody involved. Before I'm joined by Jimmy and Bob, please remember to share your feedback and thoughts on today's interview. You can let me know your thoughts on Twitter and tweet me at MC Lobsher or by email info at CashflowNinja.com. And please remember to join our mailing list by signing up at CashflowNinja.com or texting CashflowNinja, one word, all capitalized, to 44 Two two two. That's two fours and three twos. As some of my listeners may know, I live in Newtown, Pennsylvania, a town that's about 45 minutes away from Philadelphia, the birthplace of the United States, the home of the cheesesteak, the Rocky Steps, and also the hometown of the beloved founding father, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin believed in an investment in knowledge pays the best interest and early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. The Cashflow Ninja have aligned itself with partners that aims to empower you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Our healthy partner on it provides supplements, nutrient-dense and earth-grown foods, and fitness equipment to help you achieve your next level of well-being and total human optimization. Our listeners can get a 10% discount with coupon code GETONIT at CashflowNinjaHealth.com. Our wealthy partner Fundrise gives everyone the opportunity to invest directly in high-quality real estate without the middlemen. Fundrise makes the process of investing in the highest quality commercial real estate from around the country simple, efficient, and transparent. You can get started with as little as a thousand dollars and do not have to be an accredited investor to participate in some of their offerings. You can check them out at cashflowninjawealth.com. And our wise partner, Audible, 
You can download any audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can download your free audiobook download at CashflowNinjaBook.com. If you wanted to support our show, you can do your Amazon shopping through our homepage, CashflowNinja.com forward slash Amazon. It doesn't cost you a single cent more, and it supports our show. And as we're headed into the holiday season, your support is really appreciated. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to the Cashflow Ninja Podcast with your host, MC Lobsher. You must be prepared to ignite. Jimmy and Bob, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. How, How you doing? doing? Now, can you guys share a little bit about your backgrounds and journey as entrepreneurs? Sure. Uh, me and Bob, we have a pretty common background. We both went, played football at one of the military academies, and that's kind of how we started working together. And um, when we first started working together, I it was great to hear Bob that while he was in Iraq, he was having the same thoughts as I. We both read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, why we're, we were deployed, and we were both kind of coming up in our minds while we we're overseas, like how do we start in real estate? How do we become entrepreneurs? I think we both had the uh, idea that we weren't going to go build our wealth through a corporate job or as employees, even though I went and did it for six years after I got out. No, it, uh, it definitely makes a lot of sense, especially in our previous discussions that, that I've had with you guys too, that the only way that there is security moving forward in this new economy and information age is by generating and creating income streams um, and across multiple assets. But you guys have built a very nice income stream successfully in the real estate asset class. Can you guys talk a little bit about why a real estate is your preferred uh, vehicle for building wealth? I think it's the uh, has the lowest barrier of entry to get your first cash flowing dollars. I mean, because we are we're strictly cash flow investors. So, and of course, we love the appreciation. We love being able to use leverage. We love that's a uh, hedge against inflation and the tax advantages. But really, for me, tax advantages and cash flow are the main reason why you would start with real estate. I, I also think that it's one of the the simplest strategies to understand um you know everybody lives in a house grew up in a house knows people who lives in houses and, and it's it's very uh the concept of getting rent and then the money coming in every month minus whatever your expenses are what your leftovers is your profit that's a, a very easy concept you can explain that to a five-year-old and they would they would get that concept so everybody has this base understanding of, of how real estate works um, and, and granted, it changes from from market to market. You know, you've got to play with the variables, but uh, it's very easy and, and simple to understand. So that's why I think real estate's a good place to start. Now, you guys have done fantastic work with joint ops properties. Can you share with my listeners what you guys do and what value you guys provide to the marketplace? Yeah, so we've really found a good niche in the lease option model. Um, you know, we we started out um, probably. Being full-time investors, um, you know, probably four or five years ago, and did a lot of rehabbing, did some wholesaling, and um, and started buying long-term uh, property, long-term buy and hold properties here in St. Louis, um, because it's such a great cash flow market. Um, but we ended up discovering that our uh, our monthly maintenance just ended up killing us. Uh, uh, and um, after all of said and done between, you know, rent collections and then what was going on on the other side, we really weren't making any money. Uh, but we ended up stumbling across lease options, and it's pretty much completely transformed our business. Um, and the reason we like lease options so much is that um, we are we're getting people who have an ownership mentality. Um, so right now, it's estimated that approximately eight out of every 10 people who want to be a buyer and, and by wanting to be a buyer, buyer, they have the desire, they make plenty of money, and they have a down payment. Um, only about 20% of those people who meet those qualifications can qualify for a traditional bank mortgage right now. So if you offer your property on a lease option, now you're marketing to that 80% of the people. So you're tapping into that huge buyer's pool. Um, we're getting a non-refundable option deposit upfront from people. 
Um, and, and that just serves as skin in the game. So the people are committed into the property, and, and it's a lot for them to walk away from. I mean, we just um, we got $8,000 on a property we placed a tenant buyer in on Monday. So uh, a normal landlord is going to get first month's rent as security deposit, and um, or first month's rent and, and a, a equivalent month as a security deposit. So they might get you know two thousand dollars when the, when a tenant moves in, or we on this property got eight thousand dollars when a tenant buyer moved in. So that's an additional income stream. It's non refundable, and and that's a lot for a person to walk away from. The other big kicker is that the tenant buyer is responsible for all the ongoing repairs and maintenance. So obviously, uh, you know, when, when something small breaks, um, we don't have that outgoing payment. But the other big thing that you don't see is we don't have to manage that process. We don't have to, to take the call from the tenant that, hey, uh, the circuit breaker went out or the toilet's clogged, whatever it may be, and then coordinate sending out a contractor um, and just managing that whole process takes a whole lot of time. So when you use lease options, you can also scale scale your business much quicker. Right. No, I like that. And very, very powerful lesson too here is all the interests are aligned. Again, guys, if you're listening and if you're thinking about going a business, just you know, one of my uh, foundational core principles is that all parties have to benefit and it needs to be a win-win relationship for everybody on the table and this is definitely what i'm seeing here there are a lot of folks out there that would like to own a home and buy a home but have been hurt maybe through the downswing of 2008 2007 and even with the economy not really improving that much afterwards so maybe they've run into some debt uh, we've we've spoken on the show about how many families are just saddled up with debt right now, whether it's student loans and credit cards and automobiles, et cetera, et cetera. And they find it very, very difficult to get financing. So what Jimmy and Bob's doing here is there's a there's a, on that side pr- providing value for these folks that want to buy a, a, a home but can't really do it through traditional financing to take over the home through a lease option. Now, it's also known as a rent-to-own option. So they get the benefit of finding a home that they can eventually purchase through not traditional financing. And then from a business side perspective, on the other side of the bowl, it provides a nice income stream in many ways for uh, Jimmy and Bob's organization. Now, guys, if you look at this too, um, where do you guys work with investors? Um, where does a lot of the capital comes from? Obviously, you guys are invested in this. Uh, let's talk a, a little bit more about that side of the business. So we have about 100 plus houses right now, and 50 of them are financed with a bank, and about 50 of them are financed with private lenders. So for speed, generally, we will purchase the house with cash from a private lender and then once we take out some of the risk, we have a tenant buyer in there, and there's 90 days of cash flow from that house. We take it to one of our banks in St. Louis and re- generally refi the private money out and give it back to the lender. And most of our lenders always re-up for, uh, for another house. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, that, so you guys take the investor's money, just to break it down for some of the listeners that aren't quite following, you buy the property. Are, are these fixer-uppers? Is there a holding period? Or are, are there already tenants in some of these properties? What, what properties are you guys looking for? And this is a single family, by the way, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. We're entirely single family, and all of ours are, are distressed properties. Um, they're either foreclosures, short sales, or, or some type of... Um, non-MLS uh, d- distress situation, a state deal, um, or what have you. Um, we don't take any properties that have tenants in place um, just because we, we found the lease option is so superior that um, taking on another person's uh, tenant is usually just more pain than it's worth. So um, we, we always take them vacant. Um, and Jimmy kind of touched on it a little bit, um, but the, the reason we really like private lenders so much is um, is we can execute on deals so much faster. You know, even even people that have uh, their finances squared away, um, the, the bank approval process can really take a long time. And we've we've had several refinance packages that have dragged out sixty, ninety days. Um, and, and when we use a private lender. 
Um, there, there's no committees. There's 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 not all this bureaucratic red tape. Um, and, and I think that the banks are, um, are really losing sight of, of the need that, are, that they're serving in the marketplace. Um, and, and, and there's all these entrepreneurs coming in to, to really fill the void um, be, because they're just not providing quality service. So um, the one way I really like to think about it is, is when we work directly with a private lender, we are cutting out the middleman. Um, if you've got capital sitting inside a, uh, a checking account or a savings account, you've got to ask yourself, what is the bank doing? Well, the, the bank is taking your deposits, and then they're going to re-loan it out into most likely um, a, a, um, a secured asset like real estate, like uh, investing in mortgages. So basically, if, if we um, can connect a private lender directly to a, a real estate investor, we're cutting out the bank. We're cutting out that middleman. And the end result is if there were three parties in the original uh, scenario, the private lender, the real estate investor, and the bank, now we've cut out that, that third party, the bank, that, that shared profit um, goes back to the other two parties. So um, the way that works out for the investor, uh, the real estate investor, is now we don't have to pay um, the bank's closing costs and, and all their overhead of having you know the brick and mortar branches. Um, all that kind of comes back to us, and then we're able to correspondingly pay the private lender a much higher interest rate than they're going to be getting on their money if they left it in a bank. I mean, most banks nowadays are, are under probably what a quarter of a percent. I mean, it's it's almost laughable. I mean, you I mean you're not even keeping up with inflation there. Right. Uh, so when we cut out the middleman, we cut out the bank. It's 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 a win-win for the private lender and the real estate investor. And, you, you know, I've seen listen to a bunch of your podcasts. I know you're not the greatest fan of qualified plans and IRAs and 401ks. <laughs> technically, technically, that's who we're competing with. And when I go to an investor meeting or meet with an investor, I know my competition isn't paying that high of a return. Right. So, you know, we are, most of our investors are people who, don't trust the stock market, don't trust a qualified plan, or looking for something different. We are, we're giving interest rates that are double what an average return is on a qualified plan. And there's a sea of people out there, so many baby boomers that are going into retirement uh, in their lives. And, I mean, that's, that's a huge problem because you have all these people through the – Withdraw, required withdrawals from their uh, qualified plans um, and they don't have a place to put the money. So where do they put the money? As you guys just pointed out, that if you put your money in the bank, you, you're guaranteed to lose uh, purchasing power on that money because you're not even keeping up with inflation. And then I've also covered in the, this podcast too just how the, the bank banking rules and laws have basically changed through the Dodd Frank Act, and what risk is basically uh, in putting your capital in a bank and just leaving it there while it's losing money? So there's a ton of people out there and um, that that have capital and they don't know what to do with it. So if you're a real estate investor or looking at real estate investing, uh, finding people to become private lenders for some of these projects could be a very very easy and and profitable for both parties uh, in the transaction. Y yeah, so now I'll pass cross off to you guys, heard me talk a little bit about the infinite banking concept, and you guys know how powerful this strategy is. Why do you think every real estate investor should use the infinite banking strategy to capture their wealth and create a cash flow management system? Well, like MC, you've invested in real estate, right? That's correct. Why did you invest in real estate? Well, uh, cash flow appreciation, some of the tax benefits that's in there, and uh, building up equity in the property. What is the only other vehicle or system from which you can do that <laughs> that has the same – like when I, when I saw Infinite Banking, it was a no-brainer for me. It's like it, the only reason I like real estate is because it's cash flow. It appreciates. I can use leverage. There's an, it's an inflation hedge. I get equity in the property and the tax advantages. So every real estate investor is already playing this game. All putting it through a life insurance policy does, it just adds a little octane to the fire. 
every real estate investor is already doing this. So it's not that big of a stretch to to get a life insurance policy to augment your real estate portfolio. And what do you guys say? You said and one. I've heard you guys talk about that too in previous conversations. Can you share just with my listeners what you guys mean by that? Sure. The and one just means your money's working in two places at once. Right. So mm-hmm. initially you put your capital instead of a bank into a life insurance policy, right? Right. You take a policy loan to either give a private loan to a real estate investor or you take a policy loan to buy a house yourself. You're getting your return on your money. I'm going to try to use a someone from your industry's term. That's a internal return, correct? That's correct. All right, so you're getting that internal return by the cash flow of the properties kicking off to you. And in the meantime, you're still getting 4 to 5% from the insurance company. So I just I am enamored with the concept that your money can collect interest in two places at once. And that goes along with the whole way that you guys approach your investing, just from looking at your business model, just through the lease option, because lease options provide cash flow just in more than one area, just with security deposits, the monthly cash flow, and then all of the other benefits where, you know, it's not necessarily money right back in your pocket, but it's money that you wouldn't have spent as regards to maintenance and all the added things. And then pair that with this side uh, or well, the infinite banking strategy, it just supercharges that uh, that real estate investment strategy. Right. If, if you use the and one or the infinite banking strategy when you're a private lender, uh, we can show you the numbers. It generally adds a 50% return to that private loan. No, and it's, guys, if you're listening, it's so powerful. If you're in other investments, whether it's businesses, paper assets, digital investments, real estate in every way in your strategies look and try and see how many times you could get every single dollar to work in your personal economy the more you know and robert k saki always said you know it's it's not what you make it's how much you keep and how many times each dollar that you keeps keeps working for you it's the velocity of your money right Exactly. And that the way that the monetary system uh, is set up, you have to increase the velocity of your money. And we've covered uh, before just the tax advantages. Texas obviously being one of the biggest wealth destroyer. Inflation just being an enormous, uh, you know, it's a silent tax and it's an enormous wealth destroyer. And these two huge wealth destroyers, if you incorporate strategies which basically neutralize them and limit and reduce the impact that they have, that real estate combined and and the IBC strategy, infinite banking strategy, and separately, if you combine them, it becomes even more powerful in that aspect. I mean, especially the taxes. Your episode last week with Gina Lofton, she, I think she articulated best like what, as, what I felt as an employee, that if you have 40% of your money leaving your control Every year or every month, there's no way you'll ever get out of the rat race. There's no way you'll ever get ahead. Right. And I, you know, I feel like I lived that while I was a corporate employee. I think that was one of the biggest like aha moments that I had in my life is when I, she was talking about the cash flow quadrant and just when I realized that it doesn't matter how much money you make, but it matters from which side and where you make your money from. As you just mentioned, if you make it from an employee, it's just going to be even very high earners. It's very, very, very tough uh, to get out of the rat race because, again, we deal with Parkinson's law, which our expenses right and meet meet our income uh, income levels and our increases of income right so even if in an employee on that side of it, it's very very difficult to get out of the rat race and then also an s just being self-employed because now you're just taking on everything and and beating yourself up it's when uh, and what you guys have done really well when you start developing systems and processes and put it all together, that's when you start to move over to the B and the I side, which is the business owner and the investor side of that cash flow quadrant. Yeah, we are trying to keep every dollar that we earn. When I was getting 40% of my income taken away from me, it was it was very, uh, I will call it soul crushing. <laughs> and then 
I think there's there was a report um, on uh, on Zero Hedge, and this was a while ago. This is a couple of years that there's about n- uh, 97 different type of taxes. Yeah, that every American pays. So wow. there's an entire list of it. I think I got to about 20, and I got sick to my stomach. But <laughs> <laughs> very very important that you find strategies that. Uh, produce tax efficient income streams and limit and reduce the impact this, that this wealth destroyer has. Now, guys, as entrepreneurs and investors, there's we face a ton of adversity out there, and it's not rainbows and unicorns all day. What are some of the biggest lessons that you guys have learned, and the best advice that you've gotten on your journey? Uh, I think the best lesson that we learned was on our first deal, and it was not to be an Excel millionaire. Um, we did a four family and it was a regular rental, so it wasn't least known. And like the spreadsheet on this deal looks so good, MC. I can't describe to you how good it looked. Like we were gonna you know, we were gonna be real estate millionaires within like twenty deals. Right. And we actually did a YouTube video about it called XL Millionaires. And I think I think this is a mistake everybody um probably makes when they first invest in real estate because Excel sheets in real estate generally look phenomenal. So we got very excited and we probably um, we probably overstretched on this deal. And it ended up over the next 120 days kind of blew up in our face. But uh, it was a great learning lesson. We still were able to salvage and break even on the property. And even I think we squeezed out a little cash flow. But I guess the lesson learned is don't be an Excel millionaire. Don't get emotionally excited by a spreadsheet. Until the money hits your bank. Yeah, and under understand that your your model is not going to match reality, and there you have to have some wiggle room in there. Like I, I don't know if you knew this, but like government models generally don't make reality either. So. <laughs> that's a shocker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's very powerful. I mean, and for uh, for listeners looking at real estate too, when you look at a pro forma. For a property which someone usually presents for for you too, I mean, really dive into that numbers and look at it. Um, you know, um, like you said, it looks good on paper, but you have to really know the in and outs and the in the area and what rent it can charge and the operations. And it comes with an experience, obviously, but there's a lot more to those numbers um, that. That's on the surface level. I think someone once told me a pro forma stands for once upon a time. Right. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> now, uh, a habit that I've observed from wealthy and successful people is that they're always studying new subjects and learning new skills. What are you guys currently studying and what new skill sets are you guys currently learning? I'm kind of grinding through uh, the creature from Jekyll Island right now. Very nice. Love of that's the book that opened open up my my eyes and and made me realize what was going on. I think one of the other things we've been really working on lately is is getting our thoughts out in the world a little bit more. So we started a YouTube channel. Um, we're getting more into um, digital marketing and just really trying to you know use technology like you've done with this podcast to get this message out to more people. Uh, I mean, we, we know this stuff works. We know real estate works. We know the cash flow capture system works. Um, and, and quite frankly, a, a lot of the other information that's being put out by um, the so-called gurus is just plain false and stupid. And um, I, we just kind of want to shake people up and be like, look, th- this is the this is a, the old way of doing things and, and it does not work in the new economy. And you've got to adapt. And, and so we're just trying to, to learn technology, like things like podcasts, YouTube, just to get that message out there to more people. Yeah, your YouTube channel is, is awesome. You guys put fantastic content on there and valuable lessons and i would highly recommend our listeners check that out you guys put i think it's every day you guys put something on uh we do 20 a month so every business day yeah oh fantastic okay no i would definitely highly recommend that but it's just like such an example of in the new economy how easy it is it's basically i did we looked on we learned camtasia for maybe a half an hour and then we had a couple beers, and we just started talking into the computer about things we were talking about anyway. And then before we know, we have a YouTube channel, and we probably, in the month we've been doing it, got three new investors. 
you know, and you just hit on a very valuable point. So my listeners out there, guys, just listen to, to what Jimmy was saying, too. He went onto YouTube. He l- learned how to do something. And he did it and use it, and now it's in his business, and he got investors from that, results from that. Now, you can do this with absolutely anything. I mean, this, you know, in my opinion, I've always said it, it, it's one of the most exciting times to be alive ever. I mean, it, it's just every day I get up and I just see what's going on and the stuff that people are doing and some of these technologies that are coming out. It's the sky is really... I mean, it's it's unlimited right now. What we, what we can do now, Jimmy? You shared a very interesting story too, just uh, a very inspirational story about wh- how your wife got started in, in on her journey in entrepreneurship too. And I think this could be a valuable lesson for some of the listeners out there that think, well, how can I start to generate an extra income stream or you know create uh, create an, a business on the side while I'm still working to grow and build and eventually replace my income at my job yeah I mean my wife's awesome we've had um, four kids in the last five years and we actually met through work we were both in medical sales and so we both had long long weeks and especially early mornings so when we had our our first child, my, my wife's a very driven type A person, but she knew both of us in medical sales wasn't going to work. So, you know, why she was up all night with the kids, she'd also be on YouTube teaching herself how to be a photographer. And so she started her own wedding photography business, and she's making more money now than she was as an employee at a Fortune 500 company. But it took her no cash because we rented all the equipment. And then at night while she was feeding the kids, she would go on YouTube and teach yourself a new skill. Like the new economy, I think is amazing. There's no more other time in history where a human being is as valuable as they are now. It's, um, it's amazing. It's, and it's so true what you just, I mean, one of the other things that you just pointed out is you didn't even, it didn't take any money because you leased the equipment. And that would be a lot of people, you know, if you don't have the abundance mindset, will look at it and go, well, I don't have a camera, I don't have this, I don't have that. Um, I just had um, a listener reach out to me about a story about a photo booth. So, you know these photo booths that they have at weddings and everybody puts yeah, their moss put on? A, they yeah. put them in an old Beetle um, uh, van. What? There's been somebody, somebody does that with my wife where they co-market for each other. Right, and uh, one, of the listener, one of the listeners found out a place that they can rent this photo booth from and then looked around at weddings and, you know, uh, at, did a little bit of advertisement and somebody actually rented it. So they rented the photo booth. They picked it up in, I'm, I'm presumably a truck, and then take it to the take it to the wedding and make their money that way. And, and, I mean, it's just you have to be creative. And it's there's so many unlimited opportunities, as you just pointed out, if you look at some of these obstacles and just say, how can I do this? Not, well, oh, I can't do this. And I, I don't, like, if you want to quit your job, I don't think you say, I want to quit my job tomorrow. I think you get the number in your head, like Kiyosaki talks, that you need per month to cover your expenses. And then you start grinding away at it. You start at like a $200 goal a month. I mean, my first cash flowing investment was a private money loan I gave to Bob when we first met. And I think it get paid me 250 bucks a month, and I can't describe to you how good that 250 bucks felt. Now, guys, a, a core message in our show is to leave our families, communities, and the world a better place than we found it by passing down a mindset and values and principles to future generations, not just money. So if you cannot pass on any money to future generations and we're only allowed to pass on three principles to them to build wealth and achieve happiness and success, what would they be? I'll take this one because I have the, the kids. Okay, so I'll, I'll throw one too. <laughs> I I like to keep it pretty simple. Like, don't lie, cheat, or steal. Like I hammer my kids with that one. And then basically create value. I would I would add to that persistence. Like just the ability to to keep going and 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 take each experience and turn it into a win, whether whether it's a success success or a failure. Right. Thank you for sharing that. Now, guys, what books would you recommend to my audience? 
Anti Fragile. Yeah, Jimmy's. Have been... you have you read that yet? I have not read that one. It goes completely along with your message. Um, so, like MC with rugby, like I know they wanted to teach you to be real tough, right? Right. So it's not just about being tough and ro- there's a difference between being robust and anti fragile. Where an athlete is used to being ro- robust and tough and be able to take a beating. When you're anti fragile and things are volatile and tough, you're actually at your best at that point. Very interesting. I'm definitely going to put that one on the list. And are you familiar with Nassim Taleb? Of course. Okay, so it's his book, and his whole point is that the basic American consumer takes massive, massive risk in their qualified plans and in the stock market and in banks for minimal, minimal rewards. And so in his mind and in lots of people's mind, it's a very fragile place to put your money. I think it was John Bogle, too, that said you put up 100% of the capital, you take all of the risk, and then you get, you know, third in some of these studies um, of the returns on, on this investment. So to put, to put your nest egg somewhere where you have a huge amount of risk and you get maybe a 4 or 5% return, to me, is uh, that's, that's not a good idea. <laughs> no. No, definitely not. But that's the great thing about this new economy is the whole, where can I put my money other than Wall Street? I, I think that myth is dissolving fast, quickly. Yeah, and I, I definitely find that too in my wealth management firm that more and more people where there's a ton, obviously we, we, in, we invest a ton in education and that's a big part of the process of what we're doing. And a lot of it was breaking down uh, old beliefs and societal belief systems that you have to put your money in a qualified retirement plan and you have to put your money in, in Wall Street, basically, to have any sort of return or be able to retire. But I think that um, a lot of people has lost have lost trust in that system. And a lot of people are realizing that everything that they were told when they signed up for these plans and now when they move into the retirement years wasn't necessarily the truth. <laughs> when they were Absolutely. when they when they were told that now you guys actually did a pretty good uh cool uh video too on lessons learned from from the wolf of wall street which i found very intriguing and entertaining are there a couple of core ideas from that that you guys want to share with the listeners i mean my thing is when you're investing in wall street you're not investing you're speculating you're buying a stock and hoping it raises in value you're not getting dividends kicked to you every month or cash flow kicked every month yeah and also you have to understand how wall street is incentivized they they do not have their interests aligned with yours so when you buy they make money when you sell they make money so all they want you to do is to buy and sell as often as as possible so it really incentivizes uh, a short-term perspective and incentivizes trading and in, in our minds, it's really not even in, in any way, shape, or form investing. Very, very true. And for the listeners out there, I've touched on this before, too. There is a buyer and a seller in each transaction on Wall Street, um, as Bob just pointed out. So there's a winner and a loser. So in 2008 and 2007, a lot of people were very, very hurt financially. And it was a terrible time for the majority of the population. But there's also guys that made a fortune. And unfortunately, when your money is in qualified retirement plans, as I've spoken before, you know, when when there's a when the market crashes, those are the guys holding the bag when it goes down. And the guys on Wall Street, a lot of the big firms make money when the markets when the markets plummet. I mean just to bag on qualified plans a little bit more. Um, <laughs> I mean, our, my thought with this new economy, if, if, you know, if you're in your 30s and 40s, there's so much value being created right now and things are moving so quickly. The fact that they don't allow you to touch it till you're 65, the opportunity cost is, is astronomical. It's a very, very valid point. No, no, definitely. It's there's no as far as anything that's very easy to put your money into, <laughs> and very, very hard to get out. Uh, there, there's there's a red flag in there for me right away. 
Yeah, I, it just uh, it's a big red light and a shackle on the velocity of your dollars. Right. Now, guys, how can my audience learn more about you and your company and your videos and just keep informed of all of the projects that you're involved with? Yeah, we mentioned our YouTube channel. If you search Join Ops Properties, you can subscribe there. Uh, we'll bring you a minimum of 20 new videos each and every month. We do uh, case studies. We talk about um, macroeconomic subjects like we've been talking about today, cash flow capture system or IBC. Um, and we also do property walkthroughs so we can show you the kind of things we look for when we're, we're looking for a good lease option property. Uh, you can also go to joinoutsproperties.com and learn more about investing directly into the St. Louis market. Um, we've, we've been around all over the country and we, we say it all the time, we're, we're very lucky to have been uh, born here. St. Louis is one of the best places to invest in real estate in the, in the entire United States. Um, you're, you're not going to get better cash flow numbers out there. Um, so you can, you can hit us up there, joinoutsproperties.com. Um, if you're interested in, in learning how to do lease options in your own market, I'm also holding a free training webinar. You can go to autopilotassets.com to check that out. And you can email us at joinopsproperties at gmail.com. Awesome. Jimmy, Bob, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your journey and your knowledge and providing so much value for my listeners. I had a blast. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank, thank you. you. Really appreciate it. Hi, this is MC Lobsher, the host of the Cashflow Ninja podcast. As you may know, I'm also the president and chief wealth strategist of Valhalla Wealth Financial. We help individuals, families, small businesses, entrepreneurs, and professionals build their wealth outside of Wall Street and help investors maximize the use of every dollar in their personal economy and boost their investment gains. We do this by combining their capital and investments with the financial vehicle of the wealthy according to the infinite banking concept. If you are interested in learning more, you can email me at info at cashflowninja.com and I will send you a copy of Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker. Thank you for joining me and my two guests, Bob Scott and Jimmy Freeland on the Cashflow Ninja podcast today. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here at the Cashflow Ninja, please subscribe, rate and review our show on iTunes and share our show with friends, family and your network. And as always, I really appreciate all of you guys reaching out to me through emails or tweeting me on Twitter at MC Lobsher. If there's any way that I could provide more value to you, please let me know. You can email me at info at cashflowninja.com. I personally respond to all of these emails and it really does inspire me and motivates me every single day. So thank you for those that have reached out. Don't forget to take advantage of our offers from our partners that aims to empower you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Our healthy partner on it provides supplements, nutrient-dense and earth-grown foods, and fitness equipment to help you achieve your next level of well-being and total human optimization. Our listeners can get a 10% discount with coupon code GETONIT at Cashflow Ninja Health. Dot com. Our wealthy partner, Fundrise, gives everyone the opportunity to invest directly in high-quality real estate without the middleman. Fundrise makes the process of investing in the highest-quality commercial real estate from around the country simple, efficient, and transparent. You can get started with as little as $1,000 and do not have to be an accredited investor to participate in some of their offerings. You can check them out at CashflowNinjaWealth.com. And don't forget our wise partner, Audible. You can download any audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can grab your free audiobook download at CashflowNinjaBook.com. That's our show for today, everyone. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. You have been listening to the Cashflow Ninja with your host, MC Laubscher, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Today's show notes and resources are available on our website, CashflowNinja.com. 
This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objective, situation, and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.